anyway, they they go on. Um, Angela goes on. Uh, how many operations are we due to have? Mm. But also, Helen says, how long is it taking to get to this point of transition, and when are we due surgeries? So, interlinked questions. Um, so for you from 38 to now, five years. I have been on hormones now just over two years. Um, I think if I'd have waited actually for the gender clinic to uh, prescribe me hormones, it probably would have been like, I would, probably would have been just over a year on hormones now, I think, there mm -hmm. and about. Mm -hmm. um, but like some people, there's such a long wait on, like I say, some of the gender clinic waiting lists that I couldn't wait that long. So like I say, I did it the safest way possible by going to my GP, um, getting blood tests and other stuff done, and obviously getting them to monitor all my routine blood tests and stuff afterwards and all that sort of stuff. So I did it the safest way possible at the time. Um, so yeah, I've uh, been really referred back uh, mid-September. Not on your sister's head. Um, so they said it will be six, probably five to six months before I get my first appointment back at the gender clinic, which should be no later than March anyway next year, mm -hmm. um, I would think. I've already been accepted for my top surgery, so I've already, you get one opinion for top surgery. I've been accepted for that, so basically when I get back, it's probably just to see how I'm doing and which surgeon have I chosen and then have consultations with mm -hmm. them and then basically if I'm if all goes well and is happy then then they book my surgery date and I go from there but yeah. all in all for trans guys you can end up having if you have lower surgery um, if you you can have um, a phalloplasty um, or a metoidioplasty if you have lower surgeries metoidioplasty is where basically the growth and tissue that you have um, down below um, after taking hormones you do get some lower growth um, they basically use the growth that you have and basically unhook it, unhook it and let you so you get a little bit of lengthening of your growth so basically what would have been a clitoris before grows anywhere in hormones doesn't it mm -hmm. and it becomes what's what's called a t-dip um, and basically they unhook that so if there's maybe an inch and a half two inches of growth they will unhook it and you'll it you'll have maybe we'll three inches yeah. um, so it, it's and it we, we've seen a friend of ours mm -hmm. has one and it just looks like a penis they do it, so it is a even, penis. even that but what with a few like? with a few um surgeries um they can basically look like you're somebody that, that just has a small penis and they can put then um, implants in um, so that you look like you have obviously the ball implants they can put mm -hmm. in um, so you just look like a guy who's got a rather small, a small penis, penis but still it'll be functional but they put testicular implants in yeah. and all sorts so yeah. everything looks and feels so that's that's perfectly a, a metoidioplasty but let's like say if you want um, a phalloplasty which then is a little bit more complicated and I think the procedures are longer and you're still looking at maybe three to four procedures even for that. So a phalloplasty, just to explain for those of you who don't know, is where they take a donor tissue graft, so they might take normally the, of the arm, yeah, the lower part of the arm, yep. they'll take a big strip of of skin maybe even well, around just the, the skin. side of your arm. It's the tissue as yep. well and then they form it into a penis shape. They take the nerves, I think, yep. from underneath you, underneath as well. Take the nerves with it, attach that uh -huh. to the body. Obviously, do some plumbing and stuff work down there as well to connect it. They have to um, then take skin grafts from somewhere yep. else, like your leg or your bottom. But before all of that, mm -hmm. they will take. And a friend of ours has just had his stage one. Mm -hmm. They take a piece of skin from the inside of your mouth to roll it up into a tube to form to, to lengthen your urethra so that you can pee That's out. That's what of they've it. done for the metoid yep. so You don't always have to have that for the sometimes yeah. but basically so they they do they do it in various stages and for for you to have a fellow it's yeah. about five six stages isn't it in total well, no, sometimes up to about three to well, about four got about four one to get the skin off and then to get it covered with the they do that at the same skin, time when skin they graft off your, bum, off your bum and things they do that on the same surgery yeah. but the urethra but allowing for any complications, mm -hmm. because complications are quite common, can, can, can um, 
Uh, and yeah, just from somebody that, again, somebody I know that's gone through various ones. People who have infections. Complications, or... infections, complications. It comes, it mm -hmm. does happen quite a bit. So you can still look to have surgeries maybe like every three to six months for, like I say, a few years yep. even. So it's a long drawn out process. Be. Um, and it all depends, like I say, what you cop. Some people don't have any lower surgeries. It just depends yeah. on the person and, and that's, what you want. That is a key thing, actually. Not everybody. You don't. In the same way, like, like I said, you don't have to have surgery to have a gender recognition certificate. Yeah. You don't have to have surgery to be trans. Not everybody's comfortable with it. Not everybody's able to have yeah. surgery. Not everybody wants surgery. Um, for me, though, when we're talking about operations, the girls are in a lucky thing because, as always, it's easier to take away than it is to add. Um, and so for us, it's one pretty major operation, sort of six to nine hour operation, but then it's done. Um, and they, they basically turn an LT into an innie and throw away bits of tissue they don't need and, and it's all done in one go really. Um, I've had my second opinion last month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm now on the waiting list to start seeing my surgeon and take it from there. Um, possibly having hair removal and stuff down yep. there, which is... Uh, that's going to be, when, when we're talking about the time scales, yeah. for me, that's yeah. the biggest thing, is to get hair ha laser hair removal and electrolysis on Painful. the lower region, um, everywhere that's going to be operated on, because obviously the last thing you want is to have any internal and growing hairs. Um, so yeah, so that's about as graphic as we're going to get. That's, 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 we're not going to get any more graphic about that. Was there anything else about uh, about surgeries and things, all of that stuff? Um, the only other surgery I'm planning, which will be probably back end of next year, mm -hmm. um, maybe this time in two years' time. Um, no, sorry, early in two years' time, early 2019, mm -hmm. would be uh, a breast augmentation. Um, but what about they do say sometimes that, uh, like I say, for some people, we can get a growth spurt. Yeah, on, on after breast. the currently, I guess I'm about a, I'm about an A, uh, sorry, about a B cup naturally. Some of what I wear is um, is with breast forms, um, because as you can imagine on my frame, a B cup looks tiny. Um, but for for me, we'd have to pay for my breast augmentation. Mm -hmm. um, because that isn't done on the NHS. I say for the guys, is top surgery, we can have the top surgery and the lower surgery yeah. on the NHS, but like I said, I don't understand even and again, why they don't give that to the girls if they need it. No, and again, for you it's top surgery and four or five yeah. operations. I know. For me it's one operation, one operation done and, and dusted straight get. in, straight out, and that's all we're offered. So it's, it's a bit of a... It's not really, like I say, it doesn't... Uh, I think it's sexist. I think, I think it's right. sexism. It's not very fair, right? that's what yeah. I think, anyway. But anyway... We're, we're very lucky in this country mm -hmm. that, that we've got that, an yeah. NHS that can do that. We're very, very lucky. Um, I will just say as well that for a lot of people think it's a choice. Um, my choice was transitional dye. Um, my choice was to live authentically as myself, as Lisa, or die a very miserable, unhappy and suicidal male. Um, I could, I would not be here today if I hadn't started to socially transition and medically transition with hormones. Um, I don't know about you, whether the same, you would say the same, but for me, it's, it's like, that was my choice. It's like you're not really living, it's like no. not being yourself, um, just like walk, walking around not feeling like your authentic self, it's just like you're not really living, it's not like living every day like it's your last, it's just like half living and what's the point of getting up and what's the point of going out and what's the point of doing anything mm -hmm. because you you just feel so sad and unhappy if everybody if you if you went out in the world and everybody saw you uh as you know like these films like freaky friday and big and all these films yeah, where they the, swap the they swap gender, in the bodies of, yeah they swap genders yeah, or they swap from swap you know a young body to a old body or all of these things if you woke up every day or like a star trek episode and you were in your friend's body but you knew you were you and everybody referred to you as your friend and you could not understand and you you knew that you know everything that was you has been transferred into this other body and you were walking around get down darling you were walking around i know she doesn't like the bangs no. but you were walking around being seen as your friend it, it would it would maybe be fun for a, 
a half a day or a couple of days and then it would be very very infuriating mm -hmm. because none of your family would see you as you are mm -hmm. none of your friends would see you as you are and if you imagine that on a daily hourly minute by minute second by second basis with well, the whole world the whole world is seeing you in a very different light come on, Just come on. That way. wiggle wiggle then that's the reason why Anyway, right then, on to some different questions now. Uh, Sarah Jane SW. Hi, Sarah Jane and Charlie. Um, I don't know why I waved then like that. It was <laughs> silly, wasn't it? Um, will we go to SlimCon 2018? If we're invited. Yeah, we're not being invited. Not being invited. If you invite us or we Patrick invite invites ourselves. us or someone. No, if we're invited to come along and speak, we would love to share our story. Mm -hmm. By the way, you are also looking at our group's Mr. Sleek and Miss Slinky, you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, but yeah, we would love to share our story. It's why we've got our channel. Mm -hmm. It's why we do the videos. Um, our, our story isn't all that different to anybody else's, but there are key things which make it different. Um, but yeah, we'd love to come along. And, you know, we've, we've spoken in public many a time yeah, about our trans sense. lives. So we're quite used to that. So that's not a problem. So yes is the answer. We would love to come if, yourself and Patrick and Gemma and all the other people organise it, invite us. Mm -hmm. uh, Becky Hadley says, "Is uh, was Lisa a singer? I was. Um, I toured up and down the country for a while. You still um, do sing occasionally. I do occasionally. Mm -hmm. It's just finding time now. Now my life is... Mm -hmm. is uh, so I used to be a performer um, and I, I left that whole world behind, basically, when I started to transition. Um, partly because I've got quite a deep voice when I sing. Um, and I can do a mean Alice in Moyet, not when I'm full of cold. I was, I was about to, I know you're going to say something like, go on, go on, do some. Um, no, do but I can do, like I a, can do a good Alice in Moyet. Um, and that, that good and that, that you can't of. actually tell that it's not Alice in Moyet. I would say that far, but yeah, it's, I quite, would say it's so. quite good. I would say so. Um, and I will, I will maybe go back to it. Mm -hmm maybe go back to it i'm not sure yet and we're, what, what's we're the actual reason about... though you stop singing though because you were uh, impersonating a uh, so basically i used to work as of... a drag queen now i always hesitate saying this because people always assume drag and trans are the same and so they're not they're very very different things but portraying a character yeah, that's all you're but doing I, so i used to be a, a woman in a man's body pretending to be a man pretending to be a woman it was too many steps of of head fuckiness to be honest so that's why i gave all that up um but, but also really yeah but also i would go back to performing mm. um so i'm looking at that and we're we just found out that whilst we were sat having lunch that we've got a guitarist a bass guitarist we have <laughs> a drummer and a, and a singer um and also uh a jack is a is another singer mm -hmm. Um, we've got the forms, the, 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 the bare bones foundations of a quite a decent trans band. So watch the space is what I'm saying to that. Uh, Little Miss Sharon says, why Slimming World, not WW Weight Watchers? <laughs> Ooh. I, to, to be honest, I feel that Weight Watchers for quite, quite a while now has tried copying Slimming World. Because originally, quite some years ago, I tried doing Weight Watchers. And I just couldn't get my head around it. All you, I remember it all being, you've got to measure this, you've got to weigh this, you've got to. So everything you're looking at or having for your dinner or whatever it was, you had to measure it all. Then all of a sudden they've gone to points, point system, all this, go and buy these frozen meals, do this, and all this is this points and that points, and all I see it as they just slowly over time copied Slimming World. But do you know they can have thirty points on Weight Watchers. No. And it works out one point is ten calories, <gasps> as opposed to Slimming World, where half, where one sin one is sin 20, twenty calories. calories. Wow, that's oh, very wow. different. Very, they know, definitely right? haven't copied. I know, not at all. Um, would I have done Weight Watchers? No. I just couldn't get my head around it. I only did Slimming World because Rufus had done Slimming World and joined, and then so all I, I, I had no choice yeah. basically. It was either join up or or get a new husband. <laughs> um, that's literally all it was. It was a case of. But you're of, glad you did after all this time. Oh no, right? I am. I'm. I'm really glad. You know, I'm three three stone gone, mm -hmm. um, and I'm I'm loving it. And mm -hmm. it's an easy plan, and we follow well, it. It's the only all thing, the time, like I say, so I've it. done it before. I relocated, moved, and didn't didn't want to go to another slimming world because, like I said, 
I thought I could do it on one of those things I thought I could do on my own mm -hmm. and I couldn't and I put some of the weight back on but going back and doing it this time I've actually learnt a lot more going back the second time yeah. but I know that this time it's for good I'm not gonna just kind of go off and after a while it's something that because of my past and my binging and stuff that I used to do sort of self-sabotage yeah. all the time through not liking myself at, you know at some one time or another in the past that it just became a a habit over time and I just keep re re going over these things over and over and binging and doing all these things and now I've learnt to kind of control that. Still I know odd, I still do it. The odd binge now and again. But, but I binge control, on healthier it? things now yeah. rather than the really bad things. And also when you binge you know that you've done it know, and you then pull it back the next back day. The day or so yeah. after if I have a real bad binge. But yeah. So Elizabeth Tears says, similar similar question, um, will we continue Slimming World post-surgery? Yes. Yeah, yeah I definitely. definitely will. Um, well, I'll put it this way, we are, life now, pretty much. We, are looking at, we are looking at consultancy at yeah. some point. Um, when we're a bit closer to target, I've yeah. got about two stone left to go, you've I've got, got about, about four. Three, three and a half stone. Three, yeah, three, three stone left least, to go. And that'll take me down to 15 stone, yeah. so... So at that point, yeah. we may well look at look at being consultants. And I would have been about, I think, like nine stone or so lost by then, hopefully. Mm -hmm. so. um, Sarah Gregory says, any tips on meal planning? She really struggles with that. Um, we don't meal plan as such, Not do really, we? No, I like say we make sure we've got our all our basics, tins and all our stuff that we have that's all relatively free in our cupboard and stocked up so that we know we've got our stock cubes, all our different tins of veggies and other stuff and beans and you name it, um, kidney beans, you name it. I say we have our cupboard stocked so that depending on what we've got in the fridge we can go and go okay we've bought yeah. two chickens, well, we've that's got what we some do. veggies and stuff in the fridge, okay well what do you fancy? I'll have a do a curry or something else or we'll have a roast dinner. Well that's, that's um, what that's just, that's the way we plan it, isn't it? Yeah, it's like, I said, we always have any, like I say, stuff in it, in the fridge enough for the next two, three days yeah. ahead. So today we went out to the market and did what we normally do, pick up some veg and loads of fruit and mm -hmm. um, two roast, two, um, what's it called? Rotisserie chickens, yeah. um, which is what we do. And then on a Saturday evening, we'll have chicken somehow um you might pull one apart and do an easy curry mm -hmm. um or so we that, do what we did today for two days if we yeah. do a, an easy chicken yeah. curry or we have peppers. what we had today which is where we go right we're going to steam a load of vegetables mm -hmm. and put it with some of the uh, mayflower gravy and have a proper roast dinner and today we even had roast potatoes didn't we but i said but those you know what we've, you know what we've done though recently is that only due to somebody else from our support group actually we took them into town one day and they went, oh, do you know what? I'd absolutely love to go to Noodle King, is it? Noodle yeah. King? Yeah. And we never ever would have thought, for, oh, well, we can't have takeaways anymore because they're so bad for you. Well, but, no, no, we, no, we, we but, could. But I'm but saying we normally really we have to be really careful. Like I say even when we go to like um, Arvista or somewhere, but yeah. we went to Noodle King. Um, we explained to them we wanted the vegetable box um, and they put some egg in it and they said they basically to put the oil in the big wax and then heat it up tip all the excess oil out so it's just merely coated if that and then they basically cook all your noodles in it and we had, we had rice noodles that day mm -hmm. loads of veggies in it um, and some egg and tofu. stuff in it so tofu in it and you know what? We we still we well, you lost three pound that week, and yeah. I lost so last week two and a half pound. I lost, and we didn't have any sauce with it, did we? No, but it was it was still really yeah. really tasted naughty. But it, like I say it was super healthy. Yeah. So well, I really enjoyed that. I so said yeah. we're definitely going to do that again at some point. But as far as meal planning, some yeah. people, if you look at Sarah, um, no, if you look at Katie Jane SW, she's so organised. I is. wish I could be as organised as her. She does an inventory of she what's does in the, the freezer. Soups as well, doesn't yeah. she as well? But she does an inventory of what's in her freezer, an inventory of what's in the fridge. She cross relates the two, like then cute, sits there. It? She sit, sits and works out the meals that she's going, the main meal she's going to have, or what she can have for work for lunch. Well, I said she's and always then, super busy as well. Yeah, though. but she's then she goes shopping. To pick up the bits that she hasn't got yeah. in her freezer or anything, I can't do that. I said she's. A I wish well. I could. I know we are. We have quite busy lives, but I said even she look. You know, times we've her, seen her. her she's hectic. super busy. Yeah. So super hectic, super hectic, busy hectic. all the time. I but don't know her, how she manages it. For her, it works. Whereas we sort of vaguely know what we're going to use each week. Um, and like at the moment, I know I've got or we've got two cauliflowers in the fridge, 
one good head of broccoli. Uh, we've got a um, got some fish in the freezer and stuff, and veggies in there. Some yeah, but in, I'm talking about in the fridge. There's loads oh, of fridge, there's yeah. loads of fruit we need to eat, and and veggies. We've got some carrots. We've got, we've got them. you know, there's there's a bit of marrow in there. There's some butternut squash. So I know this week we're probably going to use most of that, and we can have. You might do. Oh, you're going to do a lasagna, Plus aren't you? Because we've got a some veg lasagna chili sheets. tomorrow as well. So and we're doing a vegetable chili for, for, our, for our support group for Monday. We're doing. Mm -hmm. So we know roughly what we're going to have. We've just bought a whole load of peppers, so probably tomorrow we'll do the chicken See, curry the, the, to go with the peppers. So we kind well, of plan, but not. It's very loosely planned. So I said, but the chili we'll do tomorrow, we'll probably have some of it for our dinner as well. Yeah. So, so that we've got something there. I said, even like I said, if we have that a group on Monday. And have a portion of that on Monday. It's just it's a very slimming chilly. world as well, yeah, so we can everything have that, we so. could world. So that's not really helped, Sarah, um, no. about meal planning. But we we vaguely know what we're going to have. We know that on a Tuesday we are always going to have steamed fish and steamed vegetables because we love that salmon. Well, so that's what I would um, say. So try, that's what we have to try and experiment with some of these slimming world meals because over a little bit of time we've also got used to which of the meals we prefer more than some of the other yeah. ones that we've tried yeah. um, and those ones we might have one or two times during the week well, normally ones. only one day a week I'm saying some like if we have a curry if we we'll have a curry normally once a week yeah. and then if we're really really busy and really hectic if we're doing a lot of support work and stuff then we'll probably grab a freezer meal um, one of the isolate meals but only normally once a week mm. at most, isn't it? Because because we just prefer to cook from scratch nowadays. I said we did try. What did we try? We tried the um, the Aldi meals. Yeah, um, okay. They were, it was all right, but I said the one I, I had the chicken tikka, and I said it wasn't as nice as I no. thought it'd be. It was all right. I'd it was all right. I said, but they were two pound, yeah. weren't they? 